Hello and welcome back to another episode of Football Manager 2023 with the Chester Football Club save. FC, yeah. I mean, that is easy to do for now, but anyway. Bit set wrong the whole time, apparently. But anyway, here we have a transfer special. I mean, yeah, we do. We spent um, a good portion of that money we had. Um, more than I wanted to, but I think it was necessary. So before we do that, I'm going to show what's predicted for this season according to the game list. So we are predicted to finish 18th. So not thinking we're going to get relegated, but they're thinking, you know, we're going to be down there. That's best fair to them. But let's get on the way. There's a lot of things to do. The big one first. Let's get the transfers done. So as football manager makes the dates a bit awkward, I have to go back to last season from where I first started and that goes from where my eyes aren't going blind here so we've got a fair few to go through so let's go through them shall we so the first time we got going off was a goalkeeper this is something I kind of wanted to focus on now in my opinion he's perfectly fine maybe I'm wrong who knows but I found here, Kai Mackenzie Lyle. Some of you might recognise him for your own saves. Uh, I think he's great for this level. He does everything I want to do. He's tall. Sure, he's not the most quickest, but I think he'll be fine, honestly. Maybe that's me being over the top thinking that, but I think he'll be perfectly fine for us. Then, going on from him, let's go back to where we're showing. We go in onto here, onto. So, on the foot. We made like, after the last video, I think I got like four signs sorted. Uh, because I was the first, then was Patrick Zito, or Zito, I don't know. I have weight, incredibly good looking centre back. My scout's like, hey, look at this guy, the only thing I can see is wrong with him. He can head, but it's fine. The stamina, so he might get tired from games, I can't really play him every game, but most games he'll be there. Formerly of Stratford, an only team, Aston Villa as well. He looks incredible, good for this level, could improve probably to even League 2 level. That I'm happy for. He was a free, well, basically free. There's a few times we had to spend a tiny amount on We did have that 70k in terms of budget. I don't know what to do with it apart from just. just sort of use it, really. <laughs> but yeah, uh, he was probably one of the more ones I'm happy with in this trans window. Looks solid, looks great, 20 years old, it's going to improve, and I I, tell you, I got a feeling if it comes to what we can definitely sell him on for more. Next sign in. Next up is Robbie McGill. Uh, this is more of a rotational sort of player backup. I feel like I need one. I uh, looked around and he looks in good level for it, you know, played League One level of Scottish football, which is, I feel like, you know, a fairly good level to sign someone from. And honestly, to me, he looks good. He's got some pace about him. You know, it, he's not going to be incredible all the time, but he's a solid player, and that's what I wanted, really. After Miguel, the next signing was a more of a youth player. So the, I think he was actually released by them. And I found him actually being a free, so nothing played towards the club. And to me, he looks incredible. He has nearly five star potential, two star potential right now. I'm not sure if I'm going to use him or not. But he is going to be in around the club because he can play across all the back in defence, left back, centre back, and right back. I feel like I'd rather have him at centre back, but then again, I'd love to his jump through. So, playing as a left back or a right back could be really good. He could also play midfield, which is good. So, I'm just going to keep him around the club for now. Maybe I'll send him alone, I don't know, but he can play so many good positions we need. He's worth to keep. I will bring him up to the actual squad, but I don't know if he'll start him in the games. But I'll make sure he's available for the under 18s just to get some playtime, and that's pretty much the plan for him. On to the next one. Another young son. Now, this sign I'm actually kind of more happy about Isaac Bird from Glenover. Again, this time he was actually released, it was actually someone had to sign before his contract ran out. But he looked really good. He is actually going to be probably starting quite a bit more. He's a leading uh, man of the North, pretty much national, but. Also, a chance of being League 2 standard, which is really good. Cost me absolutely nothing. It's quite kind of cheap. 
I'm not sure why his uh, transporter has not changed yet, but it should do soon. Oh, let me just go back to him. Anyway, he looks really solid to me. Nothing sticks out as a you know, real bad thing. Looks pretty good to me, and I'm pretty sure I can do, uh, produce a good player here. He can play central defender, defensive midfielder, central midfielder, and... Did I say that twice? I don't know. Anyway, and attack midfielder. All along the middle, far off a striker. But yeah, looks really good, and I'm going to be really happy with this guy. Next is... If I had a tier list of the signs I made this transfer window, I would put him in an, this, this guy here in an S tier. Dylan Barkers. Now, we're playing a new formation this season. We're using an anchor man instead of an attacking midfielder. He plays it, what I could say is to an incredible level. He doesn't look crazy in stars, but I think that my coach is not really rating him as good he is. Because I think he is incredible. Yes, he's not apparently rated for this level, but I think he's a little bit higher on it. Don't worry about the inconsistency. He literally has one job, and that is just sit in front of the central defenders and to br pretty much just a roll between defenders and if it was just sit there and hold it tight. Because there is a little bit of a tweak this season. We'll get to it eventually though. He looks real solid. He's from, it was from Cheltenham. He's played a lot of loans, this guy, so bear in that mind. He has played a few, fair few games, but you know. He also played, apparently, in this. I think I should see the notice, but he actually played for Wellstone in National League. But I'm just really happy with him. He looks really good, and this is one of the signs where I'm really, really happy about. Next up is Brandon Taylor, the most expensive one we signed for 4.6k. I know, we're spending big monies now. Formerly a Sunderland and Rochdale. Honestly, once again, this is more of an actual starting player in, in defensive field. His attack is not incredible, but the thing is, he can play right back as well. Which is really good, I feel. He's not great crossing, but he has a bit of pace in him. But he is really solid looking. And I'm, I'm actually kind of happy about him. He's got good level to him. He's decent for his level. And he's just really, really going to be helping us as a team to get through. I don't expect us to get pro. I mean, I say that. Who knows what happens. But I don't expect us to be promoted. I expect us to probably be more mid-table. Between mid-table and playoffs sort of area. That's where I think we'll be. Then next season we'll push for it. That's what I ideal I want to develop the team. But this is another player, solid looking player. As you see by the wages, I'm keeping them under as best as I can below a certain threshold, unless there's a certain player. Don't want to give it a bit away, but maybe there is. Coming up next is Connor Stevens. If you've uh, watched my Burrow and Wood save, you wouldn't recognize this player. Once again, I needed a Thunder who I knew who could jump. Uh, <laughs> And as I look around the teams and players I've used before, Connor Stevens from Bournewood. He's played in this league for Wellstone, of Bournewood, so he's got experience here. I don't know if he'll be starting all the time, but he's going to be very important because I don't have very good jumping reach on my defenders. Not probably bad, like they're above 10. They're probably about the 12 or 13 mark, but this guy stands out a bit better. So he's going to be a really good player and. I've got two formations, and there's one that uses three central defenders, if there is a game we use that. Uh, one we do, say, on video, I think. Expect to see him. But yeah, that's uh, not a bad defender. I've used him a lot. He's just, he's always been good. He's not incredible, but he does the job, and that's what I need. Now, you've got to be noticing, I've got a lot of defenders signed. For good reason. One, I let go of some of them. Two, I <laughs> lost track of it. So I remember when I was making a sign for this player here, Jack Lee, I was like, wait, what am I doing? I've already made so many defender signs. So I think of this as me going too far, but the only good part about this being that he could play the anchor role for us in case um, Dylan gets injured. It was great. And he's from Scarborough. I believe they got relegated. I can't remember if they got relegated last season. Oh, hold up. There's a little bit of uh, distraction. No, it is, but, but I mean, he got a 7.1 over last season, was former Chef Wednesday, and I like looking. That's, that's pretty much the only reason. Moving on to the next, not many more to go, but there is a key one coming up. Now, this signing is for the reason that we've actually sold a player. So, right back, former Liverpool, uh, Niall Osborne. 
The reason he was brought in because we have let go of a few players. Now, you know, if you play football, you know, if someone comes in for way players, you don't sell them, they'll kick off. It was one of the moments where, like, I had to just let him go because he wouldn't stop. I wanted to keep him, and that player was Coates. Let me show you. So yes, our former right back, Kieran Coates, had actually left us. I didn't want to let him go. This is the player that I could let go if I find certain to want. He's not incredible. He's general overall. You know, he's he's really good for the level. I wanted to keep him with the end. They came in. I was like, if I don't accept it, he'll fuss. You know, but like, they give a little bit of fuss up. Like, they'll say, oh, why didn't it go? And then you have to go on this long, like, oh, I'll let you go. If this comes in, it's, I, I wanted to avoid that, so just let him go. He does have a 35% uh, selling clause for it, so any any sale, not a profit, but any sale, we get 35% off, which I I like to think is possible, because he does have a bit of balance still, so we'll see what happens there. But yeah, back to the form player, so I'll show you the same clip. I don't know where I'm going. Oh, hold on. There we go, Noel Osborne. In my opinion, he can do the role well. Now, it'll be between him and the other player, the playing right back. They'll be, they'll be playing in the same role. He also to play centre back, but he's not terrible at it. But I don't think that's the role I'm going to be using it for. But if he can do that, I'll use him. Anyway, on to the last few now. And then we get to the first game of the season. Last few we go in here, but this is Brad Brood. I'm pretty sure I didn't mention it last in one of the episodes. I was looking at this player. He's a left back. He was a formerly of Telford, and you know, he played a lot, quite a bit there. He's very young, 8, 19 years old, but good potential. That's very be and you know what? We needed a left back because we let go of one of our backup left backs, and I thought I'd just try to find someone else. 300 pounds a week. It's cheap, easy, good potential to become something else for us. So no issues there. This one. Now I've been saving this one for a while to show. Like I said, that's here, this other player's assigned. This, this is the guy. Jordan Northcott. So I found this at the Master Scout set. Uh, we had um, a lot of reports going on with this guy. And at one point, there was some drama in the team. I'll show that in a second. But this guy, I think was a free. It was a free indeed. From non league Brechin, who I have heard of before. And when my scout said this, like, Hey, we found this player, he's got 15 goals and all. I was like, oh, cool. I looked at his scout report, he was a 4, so I was like, huh. And he's 21 years old, so he has a lot of good room to grow. He could probably, in my opinion, be a League 2 player, even League 1. And he's going to be playing in the target for role he was in our uh, system. Plays at a decent level, it gives a switch to, you know, just to the advanced forward, because what we saw, he's still here, as far as mentioned that, but it looks great to be, he has some solid stats. Good penalty taker. We actually have a good penalty taker. He's actually the best by quite a margin, so it helps us a lot. Not a hugely good finisher, but I am planning to train him um, the trait where you uh, hit your shots with power. That's generally good with people with lower finishing. But yeah, there's only a few more left. Um, I'll show you the outs. Not many more huge at the outs, but just a load of like fringe players or Plays a bit more time developing, and then I'll explain a few things happened in the team because we had a few players had a business them. I had to get through the first of them. I show you in a moment. And then before we go, next one is a backup striker for the target forward role. Cameron Ferguson, formerly of uh, Newcastle, a youngster, played a few games last season in the Scottish League Two. Uh, I'd loved him. Plays the role I need, and that's pretty much this guy. Just gonna go this quickly. And Sam Collins, which was done not too long ago actually, is just a rotational midfielder, former Nottingham Forest, not too bad looking. Could probably play the role I need, and that's pretty much his job. Then to do the outs, nothing huge. Anyone's really know George Glendon, who did play a bit last season. I saw all because I wasn't too happy with him in midfield. It's okay, but I thought he was on about £750 a week. That's a bit. I thought it was a bit too much, just to note, by the way, the highest we have is 850, and that's what the player just shown recently. That is our highest, and I wanted to keep that sort of good level. Maybe I'll see if I can get that down to maybe about 750 or 800 eventually, but right now, 
that's happened. Kiriko, which I already mentioned. Lewis Duncan out loan. Lots of loans of young players. Harrison, Bur Harrison Burke, I was going to use. I, I'm starting to kind of regret sitting him out alone. But I'm hoping it just gets him developed a bit quicker. I, I do plan to use him. Uh, probably as the anchor role. He looks really good on it. So we'll decide when he gets back next season. I'm trying to remember if anything else happened last season. Anyone else? Um, no, it was just mostly, mostly youngsters. Nothing more to know. In terms of actual team things though, uh, Jamie Saul had a bit of a kickoff because he's, uh, I tried to get him a contract and but it's still the same. He still believes that he's, you know, too good. Uh, and I think that's a bit crazy for him in my opinion. Not, not to be mean to him, but yeah, I know he's good, but he's not that crazy. But then we had the talk where uh, if I could convince him to stay, he said yes, but still just a one sign contract, so gonna go on there. No one's came for what I wanted to sit to K that maybe that's me a bit of too stretching. We have players uh, teams from the League One trying to get him was like I can easily get his TK, right? No we wanna do it. Now he's for first but hopefully he calms down. Uh, another one was uh Florent Hooty. Hopefully I was at the right fonts. He did get a bid for him, I rejected it. I spoke to him. Uh I said, oh, it's fine, don't worry. He's actually calmed out he actually signed a new contract. And that's just very really good for us. Still really solid looking player, and I'm happy he's still here. I think he's actually vice captain. I can't remember, but it looks incredible still. I always love the stats in this guy. Apart from that, this is what the team is currently like. Uh, we have a lot, of course, in you no know, that could play at some point. Kurt, Will Kurt Willoughby is here, back from his injury finally. I don't know if he's took too much of a hit, but we'll see how he goes. Maybe rotation. For him, if I don't really get to a point where I need him, I'll have to consider moving him, but I don't want to because just, just look at those stats 25 goals, 12 assists, 30 in a match. Insane. But yeah, apart from that, uh, Dylan Week's still here. Declan Week, sorry. Uh, Murray's still here. He can play the centre midfield role, so that's what I do. He might kick off force he doesn't play, but he's still on his regular starter contract, so. Yeah, we'll see what happens there, but apart from that, that is the team. I will use uh, Lloyd at some point, but for now, this is what it looks like, and we're going to go into the game. I just pointed out, though, the tactic change. Right. Here we go. I take a big old gulp of the drink. Anyway, so this is what we're currently looking like. It's not crazy the amount of change. The only difference between is, apart from having the attack midfield role here, we've dropped him back for an anchor role here, so the way that this will work, Blake is going to be attacking... Alongside it, so what weight works is Saul does this sort of general uh, on attacking uh, advance forward. Sorry, uh, they, they usually do this sort of area, do crosses, same as Thompson, be around this area. The only difference being he'll have Bleak in support here. Gale's gonna be still helping, but he more like around this sort of level. So Saul will just go to him and get the ball. It's just the way it works is well, on the attack, it'd be something like this sort of motion and anchor man would be around here somewhere and it, it, it basically goes almost like a back four but it's not basically a back four it's just midfield role but I don't know if it'll work well I am just testing it off and see if it works uh, I need to change uh, the role of these two part of that that is the tactic um, and of course of Barker's Barrificate anger but yeah this a bit more defensive because I feel like we're going to get hammered a lot. Yeah, that's my own thing. I'm being generous. I think we're going to get hit hard by some of the teams. Because I'm checking now, I remember. Um, words going on, that's crazy. It's not, uh, going on. But anyway, <coughs> basically, what I mean is some of these teams are incredibly strong going forward. And we've had Jinnigan come down who have insane players. I'm just going to show you now. This is their top player. If he's against us, I can already tell he's going to cause issues. You can just tell when a player that could cause issues. But yeah, it's going to be a hard season. Um, we're playing Dagenham and Redbridge, I think. They are predicted to be beneath us. So, yeah, I don't know how it's going to go. Um, a lot of new things going on with the team, so I'm hoping for at least a draw. But we'll see how it goes, shall we? Let's get into the game. But here we go. We're at home. This is what the team looks like. 
Zito and Taylor will be partnering up for the first game. We'll see how it goes, the partnerships. Um, it's going to be quite a few defenders to go through, see so how it goes, but yeah. First game of the season. We are actually the first game of the league because they brought forward a match to go on to TV, so a bit of a for us. Nice to see. Home match first one. I'm um, hopeful at least, like I said, a point. If I can get probably 50 points, I'm safe. That's all I care for right now. Until then, that's what I'm going to think of, and that's how it could go. Oh my god, Blake just done that. Okay, I was rambling on. I was not expecting Blake to score from 25 yards within the first four minutes of the game. But let's just take a look at the goal again, shall we? It's decent play, headed out, but Barkas does work. He recycles the ball, and from range, he doesn't even think twice, but he just does it. Oh, what a play he is, by the way. Have I mentioned how crazy he is for this level? And how I managed to sign for £400 a week? I don't even know how I've done that. Uh, we're dominating the game. Maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe we are too good. I don't know. Is this a good game to really think about how good we are? Like, I, I don't know how to judge how good we I mean, I know we're a good side. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think we're crazy in any way. I mean, it's had 14 shots. Only three have been on target, though. That's a little bit of a thing I need to check on. Because not being that clinical. Cross into the box. Northcott. Oh, it's just curled wide. Good little chance there. Yeah, about to do a half time now, not much has happened since then. We've had a lot of shots, still. They've had no real presence. Is that the best word to use? Pressure? Actually, that's the word I use. No real like, pressure on our team at all. Nice interception there, Northcott. Ball of top to Saul. Crossing Thompson. Is that onside? It is onside. Okay then. Cameron Thompson gives us 2 0. I mean, the shot for him to get into the goal was. Not incredible. If the goalkeeper actually was there, I don't know if that would have gone in. But it was a nice play for the ball to get with um, Northcott cutting the ball down. That's what I'd like to see. Maybe a third? Maybe. This feels like a highlight where someone gets sent off. I don't know why. Okay. I'm happy with goal, but I was about to claim that I was handball. <laughs> I was about to claim handball there and defender, but you know what? It is 3 0. Is that all the strikers scored now? No, no, of course Blake scored in here, so it's just Saul now. But Saul did get a assist. So, currently, my strikers have got a goal, assist, at least on one of them. Nice. Alright, 3 now up. We're happy. We're cruising. I'm just shutting now. Um, yeah, I don't know, this episode took me a bit of time to do, because... Uh, <laughs> I went through so many players to look at. There was a striker I was about to sign really, really close. Who was going to be... Sorry, I'm about, to, oh, I'm about to make a change. But anyway, there was a striker that I was about to sign for a fast ban a week. He was going to be the only one. But, last year, the team came in for him, goes them said, And they didn't even give him, like, £600. Like, what? Do you want know to come to me a bit, make a bit more money? But, you know, it's what it is. I was win to get all in for him. He was, um... It's going to be a target forward before I found Northcott. Luckily I did find him, because uh, he's looking pretty good. But yeah, who knows, it could be a different striker on any other day. Anyway, Bert, now Northcott, Miguel, long ball over Thompson. 4-0, maybe, please, don't be upside. Oh, it is onside, well. <laughs> I mean, that cross from Miguel, that was insane as well, by the way, that was real deep. 4-0, looking good. Um, I'm going to say it's safe to say I can make a few changes. Just keep plays fresh, right? So, who's looking like they need a bit of a rest so far? Because I think we're playing in three days' time. So I don't want to risk any, you know, hamstring injuries or anything like that. So, Dylan's looking good. Maybe set for now. But Brandon Taylor can come off for... Oh, God, we have so many defenders, don't we? <laughs> we'll go with Connor Stevens. And uh, we keep it up for now and change probably in a couple minutes just to... Okay, that's good enough for me. Right, now just to rest Dylan. Jack Lee can go there and maybe one of the strikers. Because I kind of want to give uh, Ferguson a game. So I'm going to bring Northcott off. And we'll see the game out, shall we? Honestly? 
didn't expect this. Um, yeah, I, I I rarely get games like this. I'll be honest with you. Um, if I'm on a, a good run, yeah, I kind of expect it, but it's the first game of the season. And I don't know what's going to happen, do I? So, oh, crazy good game. Thompson got my match. He did indeed. Kept it from last season. Looking good. Uh, Garcia, the other striker who's fast in the pace. He's out alone. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not, but that's what happened to him. Three points. That's great. Still need. What did I say? 50? Yeah, I did. 47 more points. That's what we're careful. I sounded like some normal uh, football manager in actual video. Not in the game. Saying, look, I don't care about where we are. I just want 50 points to get safe. safe. That, that's what I'm sounding like right now. But that's that really good. I was, oh, it's seven days, sorry. But either way, there's going to get points in the schedule where you can see here it gets really, really tight. Like three days, four days. Same here, three days, three days, four. Yeah, it's going to get tight sometimes as well. Uh, we've got FA Cup there. I mean, for the time being, though, we are first. Don't want to say it. No, I, I'm not saying it. There's no chance. Yeah, looking good. Uh, uh, this is a new change. This is recorded though, literally the night of the uh, what's it called came out. The winter update, the uh, all players transfers. So I'm guessing this is new. That's nice. I like that. I like that a lot. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, what episode? What what team? Do we have any rivals here? Uh. Wrexham, Trammy. Right, I see. Um, I'm trying to think. No, no. Um, we will come back for a team who are probably going to be down there with us. So, I'm looking at. Ooh. Maybe have a fax in Gateshead. Not being mean, but is that right? Have a fax in Gateshead. Yeah, I think that's right for my aim. So, gonna come back for October. One away, one home game. Plus a decent game. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, you know, you like sub. Um, but yeah, the journey continues. On to the next one. See you soon.